Hey folks, this is Dre with Coming One Drones. How are you guys doing today? I'm out here on a site I've been working on for, I guess, almost 11 months now. And I uh, picked up some new equipment about uh, four or five months ago, which was the Emulet uh, RS2 Plus uh, GNS, GNSSS system. And uh, people have asked me, I did a little introductory video on it, and people have asked me to do a follow-up on that. So this is what I'm going to do today is uh, do a comparison between the Emulet system and my old uh, DJI uh, RTK2 2, uh, base station. So I'll be going back and forth, giving you some tips on the ins and outs of either one. Both of them are good systems to have, but it's based upon your usage and what's more important and what you may want to have. So like I say, hang on, enjoy the ride, please subscribe, and like I say, let's get into it. Now what you witness here is, I've already put up the the DJI system at the corner and I will go ahead and tap it in so this will follow me. If you look down here you can see the DJI system which is sitting on the known survey point and I have the uh, Emlet system here. The Emlet system is a lot more sensitive as far as in the setup the bubble is real very sensitive so you got to be very accurate and very patient when you're putting this together if I don't knock it out of its place. The DJI uh, system is primarily, it is a drone system. This is basically a surveyor system. Both, okay, I'm not going to say both can be used, but the DJI system is a lot more cumbersome if you're trying to set GCPs with it, because basically you're going to need two of them uh, of the complete system, which can be very costly. And the same thing here with the, uh, the Emlet system or any type of a GNSS system, you're going to need at least two. Uh, one is a base, one is a rover, or you can have a separate rover. But for drone work, your drone itself is the rover. So that's why I need to bring one out today and have it go from there. Now inside of this one has a built-in uh, uh, internet chip, so it brings in its own satellites. I don't have to use uh, any local in-trip stations, which in my experience, over the last couple years trying to use RTK from a drone itself to a local in-trip and even getting this system here six months ago. Uh, if you're trying to use a local in-trip scenario, you have to be very careful. Not to say it's impossible to use, but it's not the most reliable. And in my experience can be as far as one of the biggest negatives that you can be all set up, get that first battery and you're out there flying and even the, in the course of it flying its mission, you could lose uh, your fixed position because this is consistently updating. So your fixed position is not hardline. I've never lost a fixed position with the DJI gear. And that's one thing, since I got this, this Emlet system here, I have researched, I have tried to read across the internet. I've looked for videos. Nobody wants to compare, or have I seen anybody compare the DJI system to not just the Emlet, but any GNS system. Because mainly DJI does, has never released any, any of the internal operations of their system. Now I started that system at 931, and I guarantee you it's already got a fixed position. This Emlet here, it may take it anywhere between five minutes to 45 minutes to an hour to get to get its initial fixed position. It does acquire a lot more satellites for it to get a fixed position compared to the DJI. But as far as with drone flying, we all know time is money. So if I can get a system that's gonna give me a fixed position, that's gonna be a reliable fixed position, no matter how many batteries I go through, I've never had my system lose its fixed position. This thing here, I've had it lose its fixed position in the middle of a flight and totally lose its position uh, instead of change of a battery. 
and then you're sitting there got to start all over again to get get your position back and that's using in-trip now when i went to when i have the internal sim card chip which makes it able to get its own satellite system it is uh i would say 85 95 99 percent better at maintaining the fixed position because it's it's retaining its own satellites just like the dgi system so i would recommend if you're getting something like this for your mapping pro, pro, uh, uh, workflow, I should say, and, uh, and you're looking for a similar like this, make sure you get it with a SIM card that is compatible and you're able to get your own satellites. I would not want to rely upon in-trip services. I understand there may be some other states that are a lot better. I know here in California, and it may be because uh, I live in a mountainous region of California that it is, I would say, uh, quirky or inconsistent at best. And I have, I have at least four to five stations within 10 miles of my house uh, near the Cahoon Pass area, okay? And not one of those systems is consistent uh, in maintaining its, uh, its connection. It'll go from a fixed position to a float, back to a fix, to a float, and then sometimes it'll just drop out altogether, which means you're in a single position, which in turn, if you're flying a drone, it'll come up saying you've lost RTK if you're, if you're back to a single uh, position. So you gotta be, you know, float is not accurate enough for drones. Uh, your, your clients will tell you that, or if you're working for a surveyor like, I was, like I'm doing, uh, they'll tell you that's not good enough. It has to be a fixed position and maintain that fixed position at all times. That's why we be careful when you set these up. You don't kick them around. You don't really have to, don't want to really touch them all together. You want to be stable in a location. That's why I talk about pushing the, the legs into the ground and everything else so it doesn't rock around or anything like that. But like I said, when you're out here on improved surfaces, the best thing you can do is put some gravel bags on the legs to keep it steady and hopefully nobody bumps into it while you're flying. And the same thing with a DJI system. You don't want it being jostled around or anything like that. But like I said, uh, the DJI system already has a fixed position within, I would say everywhere I've used it at, within five minutes I got a fix. And, it, and I say it locks it in, never failed me. I never had even go to a float. I never lost RTK altogether. It maintains that fixed position. Uh, all I can say at this point, if DJI got into the regular GNSS uh, survey game, they would probably knock a lot of these other uh, uh, companies off the shelf because whatever technology they're using internally, it locks onto those satellites and you just, you're there, you're locked in. Fly with caution. All right. So we made sure RTK is together. It goes on, talks about fly with caution, which you should always do, no matter if you're flying RTK or not. Moving to start point. And those of you who may not fly uh, quite often with your Enterprise drones, like I said, I have uh, several of them. I have the Multispectrum, I have the M30T, I have the Enterprise Advance for very different projects that I do. So sometimes it may be a couple of weeks to maybe even a month before I'll fly another drone or a same drone. So always want to make sure that you have checked your updates. I had to check mine. From earlier, I think it was early October, there were updates to the Mavic 3 Enterprise system. And I, I know I noticed so far one of the changes in the update because I, I noticed from the summertime update, when it came to return to home and it wanted to actually land, it would stop about maybe five feet, six feet in the air. And you had to manually push down on the left stick to make it land. But that's been corrected with this latest update in October. I haven't seen anything else that I normally use that would make a difference uh, in how the drone acts or anything else. So like I said, that's why you always got to be on point with your maintenance, which is checking your updates also. 
So in conclusion, like I said earlier in the video, it's really going to come down to what you do. If you're just a drone pilot who's just flying missions uh, required to have RTK, the DJI base station will do you just fine. Uh, the accuracy it produces will be just fine overall. There's not, there's not any really big difference in it. And like I said, when I say that, there's other factors when it comes to being accurate and everything else when it comes to flying missions, uh, per se. Now you talk about having GCP, ground control points. Are they on the site to aid, in to, to aid the RTK itself? Having ground control points and RTK is like a, it's like a, a, a counterbalancing act. One checks the other. The RTK checks the, checks the GCP. The GC, GCPs can be used to check the RTK uh, accuracy. So one just helps out the other overall. Now, if you're like me to where you've been tasked to go out and set GCPs, then I would say go with the Emlet system. Uh, the Emlet system is going to be necessary for you to go out and set GCPs. And that's why you get into argument about people, what's more accurate, RTK or GCPs? And I say it all depends on what you're looking for, what the results that you want. RTK is very, very good. Uh, GCPs are traditionally very good. All right? There is no, they always say, you know, from the information I have gathered, GCPs have a, a tipping point. And usually they say once you get set 10 GCPs, you're not going to get any more accurate once you go past 10. 10 is about as accurate where you're going to get, and that just means where you, where you put them at. Okay, if you, if you set them up properly, which means you, cut, you cover all the corners of the project, a couple, a couple of GCPs down the middle or left side or right side, you're pretty much going to be set. And I'm talking about on at least a 100-plus uh, acre uh, site. If you're talking about smaller sites, maybe about uh, uh, you know, 50 or less than that, you're talking about you may only need no more than about five or six GCPs overall. So it depends upon how big the project is uh, and everything else is where GCPs are going to continue to help or not help, uh, so to speak. So that's what I'm saying that, you know, depending upon what you're doing, depending upon where you see yourself growing to, if you see yourself growing to some, some, another level, yeah, you can invest in an inlet system or something uh, like that, like a uh, top com, or you want to go to the very, uh, you know, pinnacle of the game with the, uh, I'm trying to think of the name of the system now, the very top of the heap, but, you know, then you're talking about dollars. Dollars based upon what you're going to be your return. You can spend hundred thousand dollars on top tier system or you can get a I would say an entry or a budget friendly system like the inlet system and spend maybe between seven to ten thousand dollars it's not cheap by any means not cheap but I tell people if you are already buying a RTK enabled drones that tells me you've already spent five grand or more so you can spend another 3500 on a DJI base station or you can invest uh, anywhere for another uh, seven to ten grand in a full-blown inlet system like I have. So it all depends on what you see yourself and what your usage is. So once again, this is Dre, Recover One Drones. And I always say, hang on, enjoy the ride, and please subscribe. Thank you.